We love spending this time with you. Thank you for listening. If you would like to take your listening experience to the next level, did you know there's a way to do that, Jabo? I do. Yep, you know how you do it. You go to the tjshow.com, you sign up for the TJ Show newsletter, and you get cool things dropped right into your inbox like the TJ Show's 10 shares. We pick 10 different things, everyone on the team does it, that we think you're going to love. It's not just about our show. This no. is about like stuff, music we're listening to, whatever it may be. Life stuff. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot more in there. Sign up at the tjshow.com. This is the TJ Show. Katie Coleman, an astronaut that spent 159 days in space at the International Space Station. Katie's featured in a documentary called Space, The Long Goodbye, currently available on the PBS app. Thank you so much for joining us, Katie. Oh, I'm really happy to be here. It's, well, a, it's a really fascinating film. You're the first person I've ever talked to who's been to outer space. And I'm curious, when you're in social settings or you're out with your friends, does it ever not come up? that you've been to outer space. <laughs> you know, it does, it does come up. Um, it's always a little bit funny on a plane, whether I bring it up or not. Cause yeah. you know, it's, it feels like <laughs> bragging to bring it up. If I have work to do, I probably don't bring it up. And if I don't have work to do, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you're also going to incite a thousand questions like we have for you right, right now. Exactly. <laughs> um, Katie, when you've been up in outer space for 159 days in a row, as you were many years ago, do you ever freak out while, while you're up there? And what about, um, I would say the, the most stress is how much there is on the schedule and how, and how important it is to do it and how hard it is to stay on the schedule. And um, because the work is just always a little harder than you think. But, you know, that kind of idea of, oh, no, I have to go home. I want to go home. I mean, you know, and there'd be sometimes you no know, phone calls. With you. I, I talk to my family every day, but about three. And, and sometimes you're having a phone call where you find out something happened and, you know, in my case, thankfully, it wasn't like life-threatening kinds of things. But sometimes it's things where you're just like, oh, I so much wish I could be there. It's but so great, though, that sure you have enough, a built-in excuse yeah. to avoid your nieces and nephews' birthday parties. <laughs> like, you know, and Katie's in outer space. Sports I don't know. Events. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what to do about that. True. So another there are, there are an, an, an limited email list, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so tell me about, because this film's about Mars and the prospect of getting to Mars. I mean, do you really think that that's going to happen in our lifetime? Yes, I do. Do, do you think that... People, someone on this earth at some point is going to be Absolutely. on Mars. And what do you think, like, do you think that's going to be fun when they get there? Like, they're, they have to sacrifice everything. And there's really, I mean, is there a way to come back based on what we know? There's definitely a way to come back. I'll address that first. Is, is getting there with our present propulsion means would probably take about six months. But then while you're there, you actually have to wait for Mars and the Earth to get in the right place to have a short distance between them. So you'd spend about a year and a half there, and then you'd come home. So a whole journey, about three years. But we do have a way home. And you asked if people would get to the ground and just think, oh, is this fun? Well, I think that depends who you send and what kind of care you take of them when they're on the way. And I think that's really easy to see, actually, in the movie where... I've had people say to me, because I do cry some in this movie, you will see this, and actually I cry when I watch this movie, um, because it shows a lot of our family, our 10-year-old, who's now 23, hmm. and, and it reminds me of what that was like, and I think about what it was like for him, and, and you get to you know learn some of that kind of stuff. But it's always going to be hard for people, and I think we're giving them tools. We're trying to figure out what do we need to sort of have a tool on that buffet table of psychological tools to keep people okay. And, I mean, living up on the space station, I, people ask me, you cry a lot in that movie, and I thought you loved being in space. And I said, but I did love being in space, and I didn't want to come home. But that same person has another side. If you didn't think you had that other side, you've got some thinking to do. Well, Katie, I could talk to you for hours, mm -hmm. and I hope I get that opportunity one day. Perhaps we'll set up an interview where we could sit down and really talk. I know we had limited time today, but look, guys, we just talked to someone who's been to outer space, and hopefully uh, we're all going to be on Mars. Not me, but whoever wants to go, <laughs> right, exactly. we'll be there soon. Um, thank <laughs> hey, you so much. We're going to need somebody to tell those stories, TJ, too. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Katie. All right. During the interview, I was getting a call from my wife, Jess, and I hit the ignore button. Oh. So hold on. I just had to get her on the phone real oh, quick. no. Hey, Jess, you there? Yes. Jess, I'm sorry I couldn't pick up your call. I was talking to someone who had been to outer space. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I, I understand the priority. Yeah. No I, I had to ignore, and uh, she was really fun. Did you get to hear that? I mean, do you want to interview me? Because I went to the grocery store with our children. That's kind of like outer space Ooh, also sometimes. Also a mission. Strong mission. Yeah. Did you go to the grocery store <laughs> yes. with them? 
I did. Yeah. What a brave warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's hard to go to the grocery store with kids because they see every little thing and they want every mm-hmm. little thing and more. They find stuff behind the stuff. I don't know how they find it. Let me tell you, when we would go to the store, my brother and I with my mom, before we got out of the car, she'd turn around and go, don't look at nothing, don't touch nothing, don't ask for nothing. <laughs> and we'd walk right next to her and we didn't look at nothing, we didn't touch nothing, we didn't ask for nothing. <laughs> hey, are the kids in the car right now, Jess? Can they hear that? They aren't. But you know who's not on the side of the parents and on the side of the kids? The grocery store. Because you can't even get out of the place. You can't buy your food. You literally have to steal it or go through candy aisles, huge candy aisles. And you're stuck there waiting for minutes because that's where you are in line just to buy the dumb stuff. And the kids are just sitting and standing next to candy. It's ridiculous. Now, just for the record, Jess, you've never stolen anything, right? I've never stolen anything. Okay. Just want to make frustrated sure. enough that like, you thought about it. Is the CEO of grocery stores a kid? Like, what's going on? Yeah, the, it could be. <laughs> There's candy everywhere. I'll yeah, tell you is, that. They, and at the checkout, too, they've yeah. got these little, they've got some of the worst, and I won't name any names, but my kids like this candy that's like got a fake sugar in it that they sip out of a baby bottle. And I'm like, no, we're not getting that. I don't want that. This should oh be God, illegal. I got that for them today. They what? Got <laughs> they got I it. Did. Oh, I Jess. Said yes. You get pushed every around. Once in a while, you got to have a yes day. You got to have a yes day every once in a Jess while. Get, Jess gets pushed around by her kids. She just went on a mission yeah, with well, those three you, girls. And TJ, you can say no because you see them for like 45 minutes a day. <laughs> That's, I oh. all day long. <laughs> That's not true. How many <laughs> hours was I with them yesterday? <laughs> How many yeah, hours? Yep, yeah, let me see if I can count it on one hand. Hold on. One, two, three, four. Nope, doesn't fit on one hand. Let me go to the other your, one. Your okay, hypothetical okay, so. boundaries are very right. easy to keep. Right. Now, yep, I ran out of fingers because I was with them for a lot of hours. And you were, you know what you were doing, Jessica? You were, I was working. No, and you were taking a drum lesson. She's taking the drums. Yeah. So you were, oh, yeah. you were banging well, on a drum while I was yeah, banging my head against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I know. I bet it is. It. Yeah, it's like a stress reliever. I'm sure. Okay, this has Seriously. been fun. Glad I called you back after I was on the phone with the space lady. Did you ask her about like space food? Space food? No, we couldn't get we to couldn't, that. We couldn't get to it. We had her for such a short time, so we just asked her as many questions as we could, and, and uh, we were all talking fast at one another. <laughs> Jess, I'll catch you later. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm glad we're both fully involved with our kids. That's the truth, isn't it? No. TJ, you spend you definitely spend more than forty five minutes a day with them. I am exaggerating for the sake of humor. Okay, good, good. Just want to make sure that okay. got to make sure I continue to win over the hearts of people who listen to our show. Jess, yeah. Jess, blink twice if you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> got it. All right, love you, Jess. Bye, bye. 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 It was Mother's Day weekend. Our producer Kenny was visiting your parents. Yeah. Nice. There was some big controversy on Friday. I couldn't imagine that your mom would like the gift that you were about to get her. For what, the 10th year in a row? Uh, close to that, yeah. <laughs> Kenny buys these gold-dipped roses where it's a rose. They dip in like this goldish metal. It's 24-karat yeah. gold plating. Yeah. Okay. And he insists that she loves it. So he went and recorded him giving the rose to her so we can hear. Because it's like you're building up this bouquet that now, what, costs close to a 1000 bucks. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty reasonably priced, and they are beautiful. They last forever. You know, flowers die. These flowers don't. And it's <laughs> something that my mom will have forever. Maybe they'll be passed down from generation to generation. I imagine a family heirloom here. She's getting the same gift every year. So yeah. I am curious to know that, if she actually likes it. That's not all I got her. All right, Mom, you want to see the latest in your, yes. your Steven Singer Rose collection? Yes. Ooh. I like it. Yeah? This one's a good one. It's a forever one. It's red. That means you truly love me. I love you, Mom. You're the best mom in the world. Yes. Thank you. She's very gracious. Oh, yeah, she she, is. She's being honest. She's very gracious. She loves Thank it. you. Can we add it to the bouquet? Yes, please. 
Look at that. That is very pretty. That is nice. That is nice. Mm-hmm. Every year, same exact exchange, right? Yeah. Well, they're different colors. What, what did she say when the microphone went off? Because I want to know the real truth. <laughs> she, she, I, I, she really likes them. I, I know she does. And it'll last forever, just like my love for you. Yeah, forever and ever. I love you so much, Mom. I love you, too. And I got you one other thing. Nope. Uh-oh. Which is? Your favorite thing in the world. Oh, see, this is going to be interesting. I brought some laundry for you to do. Oh, you got laundry? Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, I got some stains that I just can't figure out. So, all right. uh, happy. You get all the stains out. <laughs> wow, what a thoughtful son. Yeah, I know. She, see, that really brings her joy. Oh, she loves wow. it. <laughs> I know, because you're the best mommy in the world. Yeah. I love you. Love you too. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, baby. Well, do I, I, I wonder sometimes, does my mom like doing laundry? Because when I go visit her and if there's a dirty piece of clothing, it, it always winds up getting done. She must like it, right? I think, you know, especially moms with adult children, right. they really, brings them back. they yearn to take care of their kids <laughs> Man, like they used no, to. No, they do not. They do. It brings her so no, much joy. Uh, your guys' mom has some Stockholm Syndrome stuff going on because my mom does not feel that way whatsoever. No, no mom. No, she raised you to be grown men. Yeah. She should be washing y'all drawers. That's don't, crazy. Don't take this from our moms, okay? I, I, no, just, let me talk to your mom. Uh, yeah, no, no, you don't want to do that. Okay, and then your dad, you had some real touching, and it wasn't even Father's Day weekend, but you had this connected time with him. If I'm going to go home to visit, I'm going to be put to work. Yeah, and your dad was doing some piping, right? Yeah, he so he was teaching you how to like lay pipe. Yeah, for gas piping. He was redoing gas pipe. Okay. So, Dad, what are all the things that I learned today? Well, you learned how to be a man, is what you did. You, you learned how to thread pipe, glue PVC, and you also found out how to test gas pipe for leaks, but good job. And why was it important that I learned these things? Yeah, maybe you'll get a real job, and you can learn and how to make some real money. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I don't have much hair on my head because I pull it out every day, but you know what I do have? Uh, plenty of money. Yep, <laughs> that's right. Yes, producer Heather. Those are two very different reactions from your parents <laughs> <Yes>. about you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, seriously. Well, it sounds like it was a fun weekend. Yeah, I got a good mix of parenting, Heather. I'm Erica, one third of the podcast, Books and Betches, a comedy book podcast where we swear, spoil, and we talk about... Whoa, 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 you cannot say that in this. What do you mean? That's like our slogan. It's our gimmick. It is, but just say we're a very funny adult book podcast. How about we just give some examples of things we talk about? Well, there's a lot of chaos. I'm Kristen, and with me I have... Wobble! No. <laughs> We talk about books, but we're not your AP Lit class. I definitely hit on the major points. You did. absolutely did not. She did. You talked Just about- not in the order you thought she would. You talked so slowly <laughs> about one thing. <laughs> A lot of sidebar conversations. I just- I hate Are you her. denying the existence of chupacabras? You know what, Erica? Yes, I am. <laughs> and we don't always get the facts right. <laughs> Epilogues don't belong in books. <laughs> Call it chapter one. That's a the prologue. The second I see- That's a prologue. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking about prologues. <laughs> You can listen to new episodes of the Books and Betches podcast every Tuesday morning, anywhere you get your podcasts. Bye-bye! Ever notice that how you feel affects your food choices? And that what you eat affects how you feel throughout the day? Well, researchers noticed it too, and now there's cutting-edge science about how food affects our emotional well-being. I'm food and science journalist Mary Beth Albright, and in my weekly podcast, Eat, You'll Feel Better, I look at practical, realistic ways to put the science of eating for emotional well-being into action. And this is important, without lapsing into negative diet culture messages that can really ruin anyone's emotional well-being. We talk about things like how the food in your gut sends messages directly to your brain. And we also celebrate something that I personally find often missing from food health news, and that's leaning into pleasure. Because food is delicious, and it's not just about what we eat. Emotional well-being is also about how we eat. So join me every week on Eat You'll Feel Better, where we use science to improve mood through food. This is the TJ Show. Hey, j -Bo. What's up, TJ? It was Mother's Day weekend, and I know that this means a lot to my wife, who is a mom. Right. And I've shared, I made a big mistake early on 
The very first official Mother's Day for her, I totally forgot to celebrate her because my mind went too well. She's not my mom. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that that's become a meme now, but that's literally what happened. And so I learned my lesson. I want to get Mother's Day right. Smart man. And so yesterday, late in the day, I decided to interview my wife while she was in the kitchen and ask her, well, how's it going? How did I do this year? I just want to get some honest feedback so I can sharpen myself for next year if there's any need for improvement. Now, I didn't think there was any need for improvement here. Hey, hey, star of the day. Hey. I was wondering if you'd give me a little how'd you do review. Oh my goodness, I knew this was coming. Um, well, you surprised me on Friday with chocolate strawberries, and that was very nice. I got to share them with the whole family. Yeah, I went to a bakery and got her like eight strawberries to use how she sees fit. She actually shared them with the kids, which I was surprised. Oh, she's kind. I would have not done yeah, that. Yeah, but they were just waiting in the refrigerator there with a note for her saying, all right, here we go. It's the weekend. Got to like prime it right. Right. Today you went... Oh, 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 oh. yesterday? <laughs> yes. She was just skipping Saturday. Can you believe that? <laughs> you, you gave me 30 minutes by myself. 30? No, you said I could have more than that, but I wanted to hang out with the family. I gave you as much time as you wanted. I know. I offered to drop her off wherever she wanted, and she could just do whatever she wants, or take her own car, go over there, and she just made the claim that it was only 30 minutes. I mean, I said, whatever you want to do. By her choosing, though. 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. That's on her. <laughs> I know, and it only took 30 minutes. And you cleaned the kitchen. That was huge. Yep, that was also on Saturday, Jabo. Okay. You so. cleaned the kitchen. That was really nice. And then today, you surprised me with... By the way, those are not chickens. That's my kids. <laughs> no, I they're figured all, that. Yeah, they're going wild. Today, you surprised me with... Took the girls to get me flowers. You got me a nice little snack and a really special note. And I really appreciate that. Okay, so on a 1 to 100, how did I do? 1 to 100 is such a huge scale. Yeah, I'd like a review, please. I wanted to be graded. 75. Really? Maybe to 80. 80. What? Well, the girls woke up this morning and said they didn't have anything for me. And they wanted me to help them get them something. What are you talking about? I took them to go get flowers. I know, but they didn't have them when I was up this morning. I mean, my kids really messed up the score there. And also, at this point of the interview, I was already planning on making her a full salmon dinner, and that hadn't even been factored in. How would they know? They don't know anything about that stuff. <laughs> well, you could have, like, let them get me a present. We did today. Okay, but that was after Mother's Day morning had already happened. So what happened was the vibe first thing in the morning mm. was kind of messed up. A little off, yeah. Yeah, because she had to deal with their questioning. It's like, well, gee, <laughs> thanks, kids. You really looked out for Dada yeah, on that seriously. one. Yeah, seriously. 70%. 75 to 80, I said. 75 Yikes. No, you did a good job. <laughs> you did a good job. It's just, as a parent, you have to help the kids think about the other yeah. parent. All right, well, we'll be back in the game next year. Happy Mother's Day. Are your feelings really hurt? No, it's fine. That's why I asked for the review. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's great. Don't ask if you don't want to know. What a performance, yeah. It's a better grade than you got in high school, so <laughs> yeah, improvement. Hey, it got me through high school. <laughs> yeah. It's above so passing. You're right about that. So I hope you had a happy Mother's Day and you scored higher than a 75. <laughs> I think I'm pretty confident she would have said at least 85 after the dinner, because the dinner was good, and yeah, I made it. I'm pretty it sure it would be 85, 90. Yeah, now sure. the broccoli was a little too crispy, but that's fine. She didn't bring it up. That's, that's good. Yeah. Hi, everybody. This is Adriana Trajani. I'm the host of You Are What You Read, a podcast about the books that built our souls. I have the privilege of interviewing luminaries of our times about the books that shaped them from childhood until now. Don't miss it. We get everybody from Sarah Jessica Parker to Kristen Hanna to Jhumpa Lahiri, Susie Essman, Rain Wilson, Amor Tulls, you name it, they come, they talk, they share. You can join us on Instagram for more behind the scenes content and giveaways at You Are What You Read Podcast and at Adriana Trajani. New episodes of You Are What You Read drop every Tuesday on Apple, Spotify, or any major streaming platform wherever you listen to your podcasts. This is The TJ Show. Our news, it sounds different around here. Kenny reads through every story he can find, and then he brings us the most interesting ones. Kenny, what's happening on the planet today? A man from California was ordered by the city to hide his boat that he kept in his driveway behind a fence. The local code enforcement office sent him a letter informing him that large vehicles parked in driveways must be hidden from view. 
So the man told the Washington Post, I thought this is ridiculous, and my first reaction was to leave a nasty message at City Hall. And then he thought, well, I might as well build a screen. I'll do what they want, but I'm not going to do it their way. So he built a fence and had a local artist turn the fence into a mural of the boat. So it still looks as if the boat is there in the driveway. So he had the boat painted on the fence, so you see the painting of the boat? Yeah, and like the boat is tall enough where you could see its canopy over the fence, and literally the mural of the boat on the fence lines up with the boat behind wow. it. And the mural is so lifelike, it looks like a legit boat yeah. is just hanging in the driveway. <laughs> That's it's hysterical. Great. It's so passive love aggressive, it. but yeah. I kind of love it. Yeah. It's very clever. He said he ran the idea past neighbors who apparently were okay with it. And he went on to say, I'm not a rule breaker, but I want to make a political statement as necessary as well as a humorous statement and a creative statement. I'm a big proponent of public art in spaces, he told local news. It engages people in ways that reaching out and having conversations doesn't sometimes. Well, good for him. Can't wait to see that pop up on the internet. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I'll have to forward you that picture. Kenny, what else do you have? There's a viral wedding trend that involves couples Couples growing their own wedding flowers and putting together their own bouquets. Oh, love it already. Yeah, that's potential heard. to yeah, save thousands. We've heard how much it costs for flowers at weddings. Camera guy Josh has seen these budget lines. Give us a, a quick snapshot of the type of money people spend on flowers. Oh, upwards of over ten thousand dollars on per flowers. Wedding. flowers. That, and that's like not a crazy price. Like that's an average price of flowers, I would assume. What's the most you've seen? I've seen forty thousand dollars on flowers. And flowers. Alone. You gotta be kidding yeah. me. Yep. There's no way. Mm-hmm. Well, people are growing their own now. That's the move. One couple from Knoxville, Tennessee, went viral on TikTok with a series of videos documenting this process. They have 15 million plus views. The couple said they spent $300 to grow the flowers themselves with soil and seeds. Mm -hmm. Uh, They did have a pro do the bride's personal bouquet. But with the exception of that, everything on the tables, other ancillary flowers around the ceremony, all grown and put together by the couple themselves. $300 on making their own flowers or planting their own flowers, but then you have to calculate time too. Sure. So I wonder how much that costs them. Well, I don't know. Less than $10,000? I mean, who knows? It depends what their hourly fee is. We do have a a local expert who says if a couple wants to do it yourself, any part of the floral arrangements, whether it's growing or not, they can find somebody, even if it's an online forum, who can walk them through the process of actually using the flowers once they're done. It's going to be helpful because each flower has its own needs. Uh, The expert also said if you're going to have a really big wedding, it might not be worth it. But if it's a small, intimate gathering with family and friends, then this is something just about anybody can do. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the greatest decisions that my wife and I made when we were throwing our wedding party was to hire a local artist to just do whatever she wanted to do. We didn't even like get involved in the details. We just said, we know you can make it look cool. And she did. It was unbelievable. That's awesome. For your flowers? Uh, I think she picked them. Okay, nice. I think she went out to the woods and just picked them. It was great. Nice. It's beautiful. Kenny, what else do you have? Tell me, is this worth it? Six people are going to board the spaceship Neptune for a trip into the stratosphere where they will have an immersive dining experience from Danish Michelin-starred chef Rasmus Monk. People who are going to go in what, like the uh, consumer version of outer space? Yeah, it's technically not even outer space. It's the upper stratosphere, about 19 miles well below the Kármán line, which is the boundary separating Earth's atmosphere from outer space. But these people will travel on spaceship Neptune, which is a capsule attached to a balloon. They're not going to be on Earth, though, right? No, they're going to okay, be... Okay, so they're out of space to me. In my <laughs> little mind, that's, that's where they're going to be. They're going to be up in the sky, and they're going to enjoy a six-hour trip with this Michelin star food. A ticket costs $495,000. Oh, oh I, I thought you were going to say 495 I was like, 495 that's not bad. And you said 1000 I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, are you right? yeah. <laughs> kind of affordable? Right. I was like, oh, okay. So wait a minute. Are they going to be able to see Earth from where they are? Yeah, they should have some really interesting views. They'll see the curvature of Earth. That's a beautiful huh. dinner with the beautiful view. Yeah, after spending all that money, you better hope it looks like the pictures. Right. You know, and exactly. you're not, well, you know, we can't get quite that high. Hopefully space junk is not in the way of the view. Well, funny that you say that because this chef apparently is designing the courses 
based on the history of space exploration the past 60 years. He says he's going to have a glow-in-the-dark stars, like edible stars made from aerogel and jellyfish protein. Mm. And he said, quote, we're also working on an edible piece of space junk from a satellite. Yeah. No, we don't want that. Mm-mm, I spent too much money for that. That sounds like a bogus meal. I would be so upset. <laughs> I just want to see someone pass the butter and then just, okay, float it through. <laughs> just float it through. <laughs> Catch yeah, it. Be interesting. Yep. Yeah. Can you pass me the rolls? Thank you. Kenny, what else do you have? Well, in space as well, over the weekend, many stargazers were treated to a rare sighting of the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis as far south as Florida. Man, I've seen people posting their photos on social and it looks gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful to go outside and even just be able to see the stars. I didn't see them for many years because I lived in a city for a lot of years and the smog would cover up the sky. too. Yeah, usually you have to be pretty far north to see this phenomenon, but this was a result of a solar eruption that was so powerful that the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, released a severe geomagnetic storm watch for the first time in the last 20 years. Do you think one of these magnetic storms could like wipe out a bunch of hard drives in one swoop? Well, Mm. what it can do is it disrupts communication and GPS systems as well as power grids. Mm. So thankfully, this time around, there were only a few reported instances of minor disruptions. So many people were driving around, their GPS just kept saying, rerouting, rerouting, (laughs) rerouting. (laughs) Well, everyone, uh, Jaybo, everyone assumes that we're just going to have computers forever. And you do wonder, what if this outer world thing happens where there's some huge magnetizing force. I don't know. And it just vroom, turns everything off. What well, could happen, right? I suppose it's possible. Elon Musk's Starlink satellites dealt with degraded service, but he posted on X that they were holding up and power grids maintained integrity as well. Back in 2003, there was a similar geomagnetic storm that actually knocked out power in Sweden mm. and damaged transformers in South Africa. Oof. Kenny, what else do you have? Have you ever been sipping on a Dr. Pepper and thought, this is missing something? Hmm. Nope. I don't really drink Dr. Pepper or soda. So. Yeah, I don't drink soda for almost any reason. I'll drink like the real Coke that has the real sugar in it every once in a while as a treat. And Dr. Pepper, I do remember it tastes good, although I haven't had it in probably 20 years. Yeah, I'd say it's my favorite soda. I didn't think you could add anything to it to make it any better, but a TikTok user who goes by the handle Mississippi Mima has gone viral, introducing millions to the combination that she orders from her local Sonic drive-in. Uh, when she orders it at the drive-thru, she orders a Dr. Pepper with pickles. Hmm. Inside of it? Inside the drink. Yeah. They just put it right in. She hmm. stirs it up and drinks it up. When she orders it from the drive through the employee doesn't miss a beat. Apparently, this isn't uncommon hmm. in Mississippi where she's from. I wonder if the sugar in the soda in combination with that like amazing Little pickle tang, taste. Tang, vinegar tang. Yeah. Mm. It's like sweet and salty. I'm salivating. Vinegar. Yeah. I'm in the mood. She says in her awesome Southern accent, don't knock it till you try it. If you like pickles and you like Dr. Pepper, you're probably like, ew, gross. I would never drink that. But there's a lot of people that do drink this. Did you hear her the way she took my order? I'm not the only person that's ordered this, babe. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of a fast food sandwich is the pickles. Without it, it doesn't feel complete. So the person taking her order didn't hesitate wasn't confused yeah the only thing i guess they don't have like a pickle button on the machine she's like well you see uh, on the screen there it says cherries that's your pickles no so (laughs) she had to like put it in as dr pepper with cherries but i guess made a mental note that no she doesn't want cherries but pickles but since the video has gone viral on tiktok sonic has confirmed that it's receiving more and more orders for what they're now referring to as the dr pepper pucker Tongue twister. The person who wrote this article on today.com said they were sure they would hate it, but they tried it and they drank every drop. Then they went on to say they imagined adding a shot of whiskey and enjoying it with a rack of ribs in the summertime. Okay. <laughs> Elevate Listen, the experience, I see. I'm curious about it. I'm sure many others are. I'll, I'll take the rack it. of ribs. I'll tell you that. Yeah. That I'll take. Maybe we could stir the Dr. Pepper with a rib. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, what else do you have? The New Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes movie is number one at North American box offices for its opening weekend, making $56.5 million. I am surprised. That sounds like a high number. How are the reviews? The reviews are pretty good. It has an 81% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah, that is good. Now, they didn't have much competition in the theaters this weekend, at least in the United States, but it also did very well 
overseas, bringing in $72.5 million, bringing the global total to $129 million. Hey, well done. Good Obviously, them. people still care about the story. They've been hearing it for decades. Mm-hmm. And they keep building on it. Yeah, this is the fourth film in this new line of films that started with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, then it was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, then War for the Planet of the Apes. (laughs) This one, the fourth kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Kenny's on top of every form of entertainment, as you can hear. You know these movies. Have you seen them all? I haven't seen them all, but... I, my mom wants to go see this new one, so over the weekend for Mother's Day, we caught up on the second one, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, over the weekend nice. for Mother's Day. Kenny, what else do you have? A new study is showing the importance of water intake and how it can affect your work quality, relationships, and mood. Ooh, I like where this is going. I like when obvious, easy things can make a huge impact on our lives. Is that where you're going with this? Yeah, I mean, the headline of this story in the New York Post reads, Drinking more water makes you a better person. Ooh. Mm, Is it that simple? That must be great then, because I drink a lot of water. Yeah. Yeah, the survey of 2,000 Americans split respondents between those who claim they are properly hydrated, those who say they're typically dehydrated, and those who place themselves somewhere in the middle. And people who are hydrated on a regular basis are more receptive to constructive criticism compared to those who are dehydrated, 33% versus 22%. Hydrated Americans are also more likely to help a coworker in need, 45% to 40%. And those who say they are hydrated on average on an average day are more than likely than their dehydrated counterparts to cook, 64% to 58%, spend quality time with their friends and family. By the way, Jabo just took a sip of water, and I could see the smile on your face. I feel good. Is this why it's so pleasant to be around you? Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) Just constantly drinking water. Always drinking water. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're more likely, if you're hydrated, to spend quality time with your friends and family, to read on a regular basis than those that are dehydrated. When I hear a story like this, and I've constantly been trying to make sure I'm hydrated. I'm always drinking water and I'm conscious of it because you know when you're talking a lot, you need to stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. Otherwise you start to lose your voice. I love that uh, this is such an easy experiment. If you're in a grumpy mood, take a look at your water intake your water. and try it for a week. See yeah. if it makes a difference. You can become a research scientist at this point. Right. Yeah. I know it's fun to experiment in our lives with easy experiments. Yeah. Eight in 10 Americans said their lives, including work quality, relationships, health, and mood would improve if they improve their hydration. And 57% of Americans said they're a nicer person when they're sufficiently hydrated. Hey, sounds good to me. Kenny, what else do you have? You know, we've heard countless stories about the dangerous effects of sitting for too long, prolonged sitting. Oh, yeah. Well, I saw research about that that freaked me out. Well, I'm going to share that there is something called dead butt syndrome and that it's oh, a real thing, that. the result of people sitting on their glutes for extended period of time. How do you know if you have dead butt syndrome? Well, uh, you could start to experience like, you know, when a body part goes to sleep, like oh, you feel yeah. that numbness. Yep. That's one of the early signs. But they say that sitting too long can restrict blood flow, causing gluteal amnesia. That's the technical term for dead butt syndrome, which can lead to hip pain, lower back ache, and problems with your ankles. I am very conscious of trying to stand up as much as possible. I'm kind of like a horse where, you know, horses stand a lot and they're so strong. And there has been a lot of research that's standing up at your desk maybe because that's what, sometimes seven or eight hours a day? Yeah. You're sitting down at your desk. Anywhere you can find an opportunity to stand has got to help. Yeah, but I've seen research also where they tell you to alternate standing and sitting. So this way, you know, you kind of get that blood flow going. So it's always good to put a timer on, especially if you're working at a desk all the time. Maybe put like a 35, 40 minute timer and then stand up every time the timer goes off. They got to bring those like sand timers back. You just flip, 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 (laughs) flip. But essentially when you're sitting for too long, your gluteus medius gets in flames and it forgets how to function properly. And what happens is the surrounding muscles in your legs, your hip and lower back have to make up for the work that you're butt muscles were supposed to be doing. Kenny, thank you for keeping us somewhat informed. That's what's happening. 